Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to discuss about lead compensator. So a compensator network having the characteristics of a lead network is known as a lead compensator. Right. So here assume we are having a lead network and the type of input which we are giving is a sinusoidal input. Right. You see here our sinusoidal input doesn't start from the origin. It is starting at some other point. Right. So here the respective output diagram is drawn here. You see, whereas here our output exactly starts at 0. That is, here the input has some phase lag, right? It doesn't start at 0. It is lagging at some angle. But whereas the output of this type of input when given to a lead network, the respective output is, it is leading. You see, it is exactly starting at 0. So, this type of network is known as a lead network, right? Am I making the concept clear? Yes. So here the next one is, this lead networks are generally notified as high pass filters. Right. So what is the meaning of a high pass filter? It amplifies the high frequency noise signals. That is it maximizes the high frequency noises. Right. So the next thing is, if the pole introduced by the compensator, so actually, what is mean by a compensator? A compensator is a device which is introduced in a system to get the desired output, right? Even though if it is a control system or a feedback system, there are certain cases where we cannot get the required output. So in those cases, there is a necessity to introduce the compensator, right? So what is a compensator? What will be the compensator having? It will be again having in terms of transfer function, it will be having poles and zeros, right? So here you see, if the pole introduced by the compensator is not cancelled by a zero in the system. So let me consider some example here, right? For example, you see here I am having a, that is this is my transfer function. You just assume like this, S plus 2 by S plus 1. By introducing a compensator, I am adding an, that is, the pole introduced by the compensator. So the denominator terms are known as poles, right? So here I am introducing some, some other term like this, right? So here this term is, that is this pole is introduced by the compensator, right? So if the pole introduced by the compensator is not cancelled by the zero in the system, so what happens? You see initially the transfer function is only this S plus 2 by S plus 1. Right. Because of the compensator an additional pole is introduced here. Right. And this pole is not cancelled by the 0 here. So what happens? So the order of the system is increased by 1. Right. Now initially you just leave this term. What will be the order of the system? Initially the order is found to be 1 because the maximum power of S is 1 here. Then after introducing the compensator, our transfer function gets modified like this. So what about this order here? Now the order is found to be here S into S is S square, right? So order of the system gets increased by 1, right? This is, this is the thing what this statement explains here, right? The pole introduced by the compensator is not cancelled by the 0, then the lead compensation increases the order of the system by 1. Right. Then the next thing is a plain representation of a lead compensator. So here again consider an S plane and in the S plane you see here we are having a 0 first then we are having a pole. The 0 is given by minus 1 by t and the pole is given by minus 1 by alpha t. Right. So here again the condition is the value of alpha should be less than 1. Why? You see here initially we are having minus 1 by t and here let the value of alpha be some point 2, right? So minus 1 by point 2. So 1 divided by point 2 is nothing but this is 5, right? So this will be minus 5 by t, right? So here I am having minus 1 by t and here I am having minus 5 by t. It is correct, right? The way of arrangement is correct. So the value of alpha should be always less than 1. 
right then the next thing is what is the general representation of a transfer function it is given by s plus zc divided by s plus pc here what is the value of 0 it is given by minus 1 by t right so it is s plus 1 by t and the pole is minus 1 by alpha t so here it is s plus 1 by alpha t right so the general criteria is the value of t should be always greater than 0 or else here the transfer function will be undefined then the next thing is 0 of lead compensator so here the value of 0 is 1 by t right so just by rearranging the value of t can be given as 1 by zc and the next one is pole of a lead compensator so pole is given by 1 by alpha t here right you see 1 by alpha t so here it is 1 by alpha t and again here we are just rearranging so when you move this alpha here what happens alpha is given by 1 by pc into t right 1 by pc into t so 1 by t is nothing but 1 by t is nothing but zc right so this 1 by t is replaced by zc so the value of alpha is zc by pc right the next thing is re realization of lead compensator using electrical network. So this is our electrical network. Here we are having two resistors and one capacitors. Right. And this resistor R1 and this capacitor are connected in parallel. And Ea of S is the input voltage and E0 of S is the output voltage. Right. So here we are using a voltage division rule. So let me explain what is it. You see, this is the diagram of a voltage division rule. Here V is the total supply voltage and V1 is the voltage across R1 and V2 is the voltage across R2. Right. Now, while writing expression for V1, so V1 is nothing but this total voltage V into V1 is across the resistor R1, right? So, R1 divided by what is the total resistance of this circuit? It is R1 plus R2 because these two resistors are connected in series, right? So, this is your voltage division rule. That is total voltage into V1 means V1 happens across R1. So, into R1 divided by the total resistance of this network is R1 plus R2, right? We are going to apply this same rule for this circuit, so the next thing is again by voltage division rule you see here output voltage is E0 of S right you see from this diagram the output voltage is E0 of S. So E0 of S is equal to what is the total input voltage which is given which is EI of S and this E0 of S happens across this R2 right. So keep these things in mind. So here we are writing it as E0 of S is equal to EI of S into R2 because output voltage is measured across R2. So R2 divided by the total resistance of this network. So you see here total resistance is here these two elements are connected in parallel. So we have to simplify this one. So what is the formula for simplifying elements in parallel? We have to just the basic thing is R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2, right? So instead of R2, here we are having a capacitor and that 2 is represented as 1 by SC. So here we have to write it as R1 into 1 by SC divided by R1 plus 1 by SC, right? Am I making the things clear? Just I have converted these two elements, these two resistance values into a single resistance value like this. That's it. So, you see here, this thing, this is written here. And once you simplify this element, these things are in series with this R2, right? So, when you combine two elements in series, just you have to add. That's it. So, here it is written as R2 plus this a combination of this R1 and capacitor, right? So, the next thing is I am simplifying this denominator term. So, when you simplify what happens R2 plus this R1 into 1 by SC becomes R1 by SC. The whole divided by when you take LCM R1 SC plus 1 divided by SC, right? And this SC SC terms cancels each other and finally we are having an expression like this. 
e naught of s is equal to e i of s into r2 by r2 plus r1 by r1 c s plus 1. Right. So, again we are rearranging the above expression. So, e naught of s by e i of s. I am moving this term to the left hand side. So, again we are having the expression like this. The next thing is again we are taking LCM for the denominator part. So, when you take LCM what happens? R2 into this entire term will get multiplied right plus R1 and divided by this term right. So, when you multiply what happens? R1 R1 CS into R2 so this is term first term plus R2 into 1 gives R2 and this plus R1 here right. So, again when you rearrange this term this denominator term will occupy the numerator part right. So, finally this is the expression for our E naught of S by E i of S. So, the next thing is this is our expression and again we are simplifying right. So, here I am taking this R1 and C term outside. So, when I take this R1 and C outside what happens here this term becomes S plus 1 divided by R1 into C right. Again when you move to the denominator term here again we are taking this R1, R2 and C commonly outside. So, when you take these terms outside what happens this term becomes S plus and here this R1 plus R2 will be divided by this R1, R2 into C because these are the terms we take commonly outside, right. So, the next thing is again we are rearranging and you see since both the numerator and denominator terms are same, they cancel each other and finally here we are having an expression like this S plus 1 by R1 C whole divided by S plus again I am rearranging this expression as that is R1 plus R2 by R2 can be written as 1 divided by R2 by R1 plus R2. Right. I hope you people are familiar with this right. Into again 1 divided by this R1 into C. Just rearranging that's it. Then this is our expression number 1. And the next thing is the general form of a lead compensator is given by this expression. Right. Now this is our transfer function of a lead network and this is the standard representation of a lead compensator. So, we are comparing this 1 and 2. When you compare this 1 and 2, what happens? Here you see. Here we will be having our E naught of S divided by E i of S. Right. And here this is our transfer function of a lead network. So, when you compare these two terms, what happens? You see. Here in the place of 1 by t, I am having 1 by R1C. So, the value of t is R1 into C. Right. You see. This is what I have written here. The value of t is R1 into C. And the next thing is, here we are having alpha 1 by alpha into t. Right. So, here 1 by in the place of alpha, I am having this. And in the place of t, I am having this. That's it. Right. So, here comes the end of this derivation. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment section. Thank you.